and welcome back to another FPV Guy video. I'm Bo Lorenzen and today I'm hanging out in the California desert because I'm gonna take a couple of drones for a flight and there's nothing better place than the big old expanse of space to try a new drone. You don't quite know how it's gonna fly even though I do have reason to believe these are very safe drones. What I have with me here is the Valkyra Voyager 5 and here is the kit and I think you guys can kind of see what's going on here. But one of the interesting things with some of these Valkyra products is they're actually deployed in Asia and operating as LTE systems, which means that true Valkyra's smart ground control and cent centralized ground control, you can operate many, many different drone systems from just one place. The idea, of course, is you can have a police department where you have a whole set of screens and multiple drone operators that's flying drones deployed maybe 30 or 100 miles or on another continent using LTE with very short latency. So that's a product that Valkyra has really been specializing in overseas that we're not seeing much of here in California, but I'm sure in the future, as drones becomes more commercial, we're gonna be seeing it here the typical application, for instance, would be a small police department that can have multiple drones pre-deployed and they're able to pop a drone from the local, from their office and see what's going on somewhere and then come back and land on that rooftop where the drone belongs. So they can operate it remotely and go to and from addresses at say 200 feet altitude so that they know they're operating over that city, not running into roofs. Anyway cracking stuff out of here. Here's the controller. Power's up here. Flight modes are here. The takeoff, landing, manual, GPS is up here. So that's not really, that's just the controller. Here we have the aircraft itself. And to deploy this, I'm pushing the red buttons here. Before I do that, I have to release the gimbal holder here. Then I fold this up, I push the red button here, fold the legs down, push the red button here, fold the legs down, change hands, remove the gimbal guard, and back here we got the GPS antennas coming up like that. So here's our aircraft. We need some antennas or we need some <laughs> propellers and we, oops, we're missing a lens cap. So that one's already ready. Yes. Okay, so while we are looking at this, they also have a fairly large charging station here. So the standard batteries goes right in here and plops on like that. You can charge three batteries at a time on this charging station. So there you have it guys, our aircraft is pretty much deployed and ready to fly. The airframe itself has almost 45 minutes of flight time. However, when you want to hang a camera on here, and this is the 30 times zoom, optical zoom, and that's gonna reduce our flight times to about 30 some minutes, which is a lot less of course, but still a very respectable flight time. A lighter camera would get you longer. If you add a thermal camera, you're getting down to about 25 minutes of flight time. And that's the cool thing, they are coming out with a thermal visual camera system for this. And they're also coming out with a gimbal for a FLIR Duo Pro, which gets you about 20 minutes of flight time on this platform. That's a very cool little setup here. Now, to start this, you actually just need to turn on one of these batteries, and that's gonna turn the other ones on also. However, once you're done flying, what you need to do is turn off each battery by itself because you have redundancy in the battery. So if one battery goes out during flight, you still have flight from the other batteries. So because of that, once you land, you actually have to turn off each of the three batteries because the system is not allowed to turn down multiple batteries at the same time, but it is allowed to turn them on. So as long as you turn one on, the rest comes up by themselves.
Okay, so we're flying here. We're about 10, 15 minutes in of some of my flight time. And on the long end of the 30 time zoom, up here in the mountains, you can definitely see there's some jello. But keep in mind, this is a flying aircraft right over us right here, flying at about 100 plus feet and with a 30 time optical zoom. So there's some jello going on here. We can't get around that. But when you zoom back out, on the way back out, we're certainly, you can see right here, coming down a little bit, you're getting a lot of really nice, solid shots here. It's not broadcast quality. I would be lying if I said that, but it's great for observation because you can pull in and you can actually see something. Look at this. That's how far, remember we were in on just that mountaintop out there? And this is, now it's back all the way out to wide. I'm gonna go tilt down here. I'm using the little joystick down the bottom and look at that, that's where I'm standing. And uh, let me try to zoom in on this guy down here by the car. There it comes. And turn a little bit so we can see this guy. Now, this is a big zoom camera. So we're gonna give it a little bit of time to focus. And look at that, there is somebody down there. And you should be able to recognize my face in that shot. We're not actually all the way in. Oh, I think we are all the way in. We're losing our focus again, coming back out. And you can kind of see how far we are coming out here. I'm using the little joystick down here to direct the camera. And I can actually take it over so the camera is 100% flown by this and it's in the lock mode. Or I can leave it so that I pan the camera with the yaw stick and tilt the camera down here. That gives me a lot of control. Of course, I can also read my license plate if I wanted to, but I don't really want to read my license plate because this is YouTube. There we have it. I'm going to take this one down and then we're going to talk a little bit more about it and wrap it up. to come back damn it all right there guys now we are actually out at 1,000 feet away and this is the shot we are getting so we're starting to get our low battery warning so it's time for me to come in and as I do that so now we're on our way back home and I'm just gonna start zooming out here we're coming back but that was from thousand feet out now where I'm coming out, you can see how far out we are really. The aircraft is coming back pretty full clip. So there we go. I'm going to come in and land now. But that was at 1,000 feet or 300 meters away. And here we're coming back. So we were actually able to get a pretty good sight of what we were seeing 1,000 feet away out here in the desert. So there you go. We're coming in. And we're getting the low battery warning here because we just passed 30% battery remaining. But of course, this is a battery that actually auto lands after 30 minutes with this camera. So at 30%, we have about 10 minutes left. So while I'm on my way back right now, it's what I call no cow on the ice. No reason to panic quite yet. There we are, it's overhead. And I actually had the camera on follow mode. So to get an idea, if I wanna see the, I have to follow back. I was on lock mode, so it was locked and I was driving the camera right, left, up, down with the joystick. Now I have turned the camera back, so it's actually following the orientation of the aircraft. Anyway, we're gonna come in here. If you back up a little bit, but keep rolling, and we're just gonna come in and put it down right here. One of the remarkable things of this aircraft is both the Voyager 4 that has been flying the last year and now the Voyager 5, it's doing exactly what I expected to. It's very unremarkable while I'm flying it. There's no like panic. I'm not like ever feeling that it's starting to do something I did not expect. And that's a really big issue when it comes to an aircraft because you don't want to feel 
what is going on here. You don't want to be wondering about that when you're trying to look for, say, somebody out in the desert. You want to focus on the job you're here to do, and the aircraft should be flying by itself. Well, there you have it, guys. That's probably one of the most uneventful first flights I've done of a drone I've frankly never flown before. Popped up, it behaved exactly the way I wanted it to. I was out at about 300 meters, which is not a whole lot, but we flew around, we spent about 20 minutes just goofing around here before it started saying low power. It's going to auto land after 30 plus minutes with this camera. So we basically, when it set low power at this setting in the software, it's basically you can adjust in the app. When it set low power that I had set to 30, we still had about 10 minutes before it was gonna auto land. That's a lot of margin when you're out flying. There's no reason to stress. It's like beep, beep, it's time. You've got 10 minutes to get back home. If you can't make it home from 500 meters in 10 minutes, you need help. Images on the long end of the zoom, there's a definitely jello going on, but you know, it's still doing the job. It's showing us what's out there. I don't feel the long end is completely 4K, so I'm thinking there is also some digital stabilization going on out there. I feel it's 4K from about no zoom to about probably 15, 20 times zoom. And from there, it seems to be losing a bit of resolution. But honestly, I didn't really expect anything other than that. Radio, easy to work with. And so here's an interesting thing. Valkyra is selling about 10% of these as LTE units. Is that one of 10 units of these things comes with an LTE and a SIM card built into it so that you can operate this. So there's a market in the commercial mining surveillance that's using remotely deployed and operated drones. And that's a whole different video because they also have an amazing ground control center that can operate, I think, as much as 20 different drones at the same time with individual operators operating each, able to switch them back and forth. So they have developed this entire package to operate with LTE commercial drone and surveillance police activity drone systems. I did pop out the batteries right after we landed. And even though we had 20 plus minutes of flight time, they were really not, they were just kind of lukewarm. Now they're not even lukewarm, they're just kind of cool. Well, they're not cool, but they, you can feel they've been flown, but they're not like sizzling hot by any means. So very satisfying amount of temperature in the battery after you land it. That's about it. Again, like I said, it's a 4K camera. It's losing some of that resolution when you get all the way in there. So to pack it back up, we just kind of literally fold this in and push this and fold that, do that all the way around, drop it into the box, and we're ready to go on to the next location if we were out here inspecting something. So that's it, that's the Voyager 5 from Alkira. Check out their website for more information about it. And of course, click in the corner underneath the video here, click subscribe, make sure you stay tuned for more videos. And talking about more videos, you can see Robert, doing the plumber in the background there. He's actually putting together the gasoline dry, driven drone that also has been set up with radio frequency management for me, but it's a two hour flight time surveillance drone that allows to hold in position. It's the QR1200 that can stay in position, say for a sports game for two hours. Again, that is meant to operate on LTE, but kindly they have set it up with a radio frequency controller so we get to fly a gasoline powered hybrid drone. Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for that video because to be honest with you, I'm terrified, but damn, I wanna fly a gasoline powered drone. So stay tuned for that.